Hello, good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be back on Hidden Secrets in the Attic, God's Royal Network with Dr. Paula Price, as who is making sure that we bring this to you every week. And we are so happy to be able to be here and see that we can just talk about the things of God and be able to help you to really just go to the next level in your walk with Christ. I believe that these broadcasts are helping many of you. I've heard from you, and that's how I know. The Lord has let me know as well that many of you have things have surfaced and you begin to understand that there are good things in your attic and bad things in your attic. But what do we need to do? We need to work on whatever's there. If you put them there and you left them there for a long time because you were thinking, oh my goodness, I really need to make sure that this thing that's in my attic, I need to find it. And you found it and it was a treasure. It wasn't a trial. It wasn't something that made you cry. It was something that made you happy and made you prosperous. So that's what we're doing. We're going more into the treasures now instead of the trials that you found in your attic, all those hurts and disappointments. Those are there. We're going to still be able to uproot those. But for a while and for a season, we're talking about those things that you need to go and locate and put into practice the way God has told you to do so. So remember to share, share, share. You've been doing that as well, and that's been very helpful for people that have just found out that we're doing this, and they're looking at it and going, I needed that. So know that you're sharing helps somebody else. So again, weekly, we're actually showcasing and we're securing, but we're not going to make it where your destiny is, is being sabotaged anymore, anymore in this uh, life that we're living. We're not sabotaging your reason for living. We're not doing that. We're showcasing and we are securing in this season. So remember the trials are there, the treasures are there, but we're gonna hit those treasures. Some people do not have good memories and there are some people that do have good memories. So think about that. Today's topic, the topic today, the attic topic, we're gonna to call it that. The attic topic of today, of this particular week, is how I learned to be an apostle slash wife. How I learned to be an apostle and a wife. Some of you need this message. You need to be able to tell someone else. It could even relate to someone that is a pastor who is a female. Uh, or maybe you are a, um, a bishop and you are a female. So what we're trying to bring out today is that there is something that you need to understand that God has given us in that grace walk, in the walk of just understanding where grace comes into play. He's given us the grace to be able to be an apostle and a wife. Just like he gave men the grace to be a husband and an apostle, or an apostle and a husband. So sometimes you have to talk about things like that because it's going on in the world. People don't know what to do when they get in these particular roles. They know God has called them to do it, but they can't balance it off. I feel like that it's the seesaw that is going to flip over. And I can say that in my own personal life, some of these years were a seesaw. They felt like things were gonna just fall apart from my life. Um, and yet that's part of the call of being an apostle because what we do as apostles are really important to the king and to the kingdom. Therefore, it's gonna have a challenge behind it. You're gonna have some suffering. You're gonna have some trials. You're going to have things that are just try to make you just tear you, you know, tear you completely down. But God, but God. So I've learned how to be both. I'm still learning more and more every single day of my life. I don't think that will ever end. He's always giving me a new adventure. But I want to share some of that with you today so that you can learn. Or you can maybe teach someone else when you're working in a church and you're noticing that that's what's going on, some friction, things that are not going real well because that person has both of those roles trying to work with. Tell them to go back and look at this. Go back and try to help somebody else. So an apostle's call, I believe it is the most marvelous call that's out there. But at times that call is challenging, just like I just said. Sometimes it feels like you're going through lonely moments or you know frustration, but it's exciting and it's satisfying. So that is the end result. It's exciting and it's satisfying. So I will never give up this call. I'm, I was called as a, in my uh, mother's womb and I will take it on out of this world 
world onto the next world that God has for us. So, um, or the world we came from, <laughs> the place we came from, the kingdom, the nation. So today I want you to understand that many women are struggling with being in ministry and being married. They, they are the lead role person. They're not, um, their husband is not the apostle. Their husband may be the prophet. Their husband may be the pastor. But they are that lead person. The apostle is the first ranking, high ranking office. So, you know, sometimes it just becomes something where the enemy uses to try to make it a barrier and friction comes in the marriage. But there is something that God has given us to be able to work with, to understand in all of our getting, get understanding, get understanding. So I'm going to speak of how my journey of being a married female apostle works or is working just my own personal journey i don't know about yours maybe you're going through something and you can't seem to work through it i pray this is going to help you today so my husband he did not want god to look at him one day and say keith cheney why did sally never reach her potential that i put in her that i gave her and then say to him it's because of you keith that's why she never reached it. He doesn't want to hear those words. He realizes that I belong to him first. I belong to him first. That I'm doing what I'm doing even in ministry because of him, because of him. So everything that I get called to do, if it takes time away from my mate, it should not be something that causes us to have friction. It should cause us to get even closer because he knows I'm obeying God when I obey God and things come right in our life, in our home, and all around us. Same thing if you're a husband and you're the lead person. Obey God. Your wife will be satisfied if you obey God. So I, I just started thinking about that, that, you know, okay, you don't want God to call you on the carpet. And I don't want him to call us on the carpet. So I'm going to do what he says. And that's what my husband came to the revelation of. I just need to do what he says. Now, if there are battles, I'm not going to sit here and be the saint of all times. I know at times that it's still, it's just, the word is challenging, where the enemy comes and tries to bring that back and, and make it a challenge again. But I have to be in that remembrance state with the Lord of that what he's called me to do, he'll also grace me to do it. I'm going to say that again. What he called me to do, he will grace me to do it. I, when I understood that revelation, I changed. I begin to say, oh, Cindy Sue doesn't have that grace. She has grace for some things, but she doesn't have that grace to do what I'm doing. Dr. Price has grace to do some things that I can't do. But when God graces you with something, you can do it, and you can do it with full speed ahead. The devil gets knocked off of every curb there is. So he knew that I was called to preach. This is my, my husband. He knew I was called to teach, to preach, and to sing. He knew that, that I was a, a, a psalmist, a prophetic singer. And if he was going to dictate my life and order me around on how I was going to obey the call of my life, it would have not been good for him in any capacity. He got that much understanding, y'all. Some of you men got to wake up on this because it's something that God wants us to see. These women are called of God, and they are called to do what they're called to do in this hour. You as an apostle, as a woman, if God has really called you 100%, he will grace you to do the job. He will also keep your marriage if you do it God's way. Guys, I say all the time, God's will, God's way. It's got to be done his way. So some men dictate their wives. I've seen this happen in churches. I've pastored churches for many, many years, and I saw where the men... Well, I'm going to tell you what you need to do, and I'll tell you how to do it. And I'm going to, they dictated their wives, and they told them, it's time to be home at 8 o'clock. I don't care if Bible study's not over or not. You need to be in this house. They dictated their wives, and these are women that were in lead positions in marriage. They were being dictated to. They were dictated in what to say. When you go, you tell that pastor this. You tell that uh, uh, apostle this. You tell this person this. All of these ways they were dictating, and it's still happening this very minute. Some men do that, not all men. But I encourage you as men, talk to your wives. Stop dictating 
everything to them, telling them what they can and cannot do. Listen to the voice of God. If you don't know God, you sure need to be quiet and let the wife come on and do what she's got to do. <laughs> anyway, um, what are your goals? What are her goals? That's what you need to be talking about. Sit down and communicate. Let that person tell you what God has told them and trust them with what they say. I told my husband what God was saying to me. I didn't go, well, I hope you understand it, and it, I, do I need to talk to I didn't talk to him 100 years about it. I told him exactly what God had told me that he had called me to do, and that I, Apostle Sally Cheney, I'm going to obey my God. I got to do it. I have nothing else to be on this earth for. If I don't want to obey him, I need to be taken off the planet. So I told my husband, I'm going to do what he says. My husband came to a, a realization in that same manner. He said, hmm. You just need to do what God says. I mean, I can't, I'm not gonna tell you. You just do what God says. And we got to a, a, a place where we communicated that with each other a lot. Even if I had to make a decision, a last minute decision, he knew that I was gonna hear God or I'm gonna listen for what God says and make that be my final. So I wanna read this one scripture today in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. Just one scripture. 1 Peter 3 and 7 says, Likewise, ye husbands, Dwell with them according to knowledge. Listen to that. Dwell with your wife according to knowledge. What's she telling you? What's she saying? What kind of knowledge is being conveyed out of her spirit? Giving honor unto the wife. Oh, husbands, you need to give honor to the wife. There is something there. Not beat them up. Not talk bad about them, but give honor to them. As unto the weaker vessel. God made us that way. He knows what he's doing. Now, I'm going to tell you for sure. Dr. Price preaches all the time. Strong is not wrong. Strong is not wrong. So, don't take this scripture and think that you are in that way not a strong person. You were called to be an apostle. You definitely are strong. So, here the scripture is right. As being and as being heirs together, heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. My Lord, your prayers are being hindered because you're not taking the time to dwell with each other according to knowledge. Get understanding of what you're saying. Communicate. Talk about this is who I am. This is what I believe God is saying for me. These are the careers he's telling me to go after. Talk, 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 talk. I believe it can, that scripture can go both ways, but here it's addressing the husbands. Dwell with them according to knowledge. So I want to leave that scripture with you today. And then I'm going to ask you a question. Are you actually helping your wife? Or are you hindering your wife? Come on. Think about that for about mm, two seconds. Mm. Are you helping her or are you hindering her? Because if you've got all the rules, you've made all the rules, got to do everything you say because you the man, come on here. That could be a hindrance. What if God spoke to her and told her some things? Mm. So if you want to keep her mouth shut and only say, I'll tell you when you need to speak, or God didn't say that, when were you last time in the Word? Did you really talk about that? Did you get into the Word the last week or two? And you're going to give me a revelation? Come on here. Somebody needs to know. The woman has something, too, to share. So therefore, don't hinder her from bringing out what God wants to bring out. Could save your life. Are you pushing her Amen. toward God's given plans? What are you doing? Are you pushing her, getting her there, saying, uh-uh, you got to go, girl. you got to be there. Listen, young lady, you've got to get to the top. You've got to rise all the way up where God has called you to rise. You cannot afford to backslide. You cannot afford to slow down. You can't afford to let that detour take you off path. And I can't afford for that to happen. Men, encourage these women. My husband has told me many times, because I'll say, babe, I'm just at a point where I don't know. I just, it's not I'm going to fall on God or nothing like that. I mean, fall out and, and go away from God. But I just, I don't know. I just, I'm trying to get right answers. And, and he'll tell me, he says, it's in you. It's in you. Those were his favorite words. It's in you. That's all I needed to hear. That was encouraging. That made me understand that I wasn't being hindered by him. I said, I know you need to go ahead and just stop all this craziness. 
No, I didn't hear, try to hear any of that, and he didn't bring that to me. Your husband needs to be encouraging you, affirming you, telling you things that are making you grow up and become stronger in the Lord and the power of his might. That's where he should be, that vessel. If he's not, pray for him that he comes into that mindset. No matter what the answer is that, you're, that, that ends up where you actually are asking that question, is he helping me or is he hindering me, it all starts with communication. And that's what that scripture just gave me in 1 Peter 3 and 7. you got to communicate. You've got to communicate. If you're going to be an apostle and your husband is not in that lead position with you or uh, any other position like that, and he's, he's maybe just working on the side uh, at American Airlines or wherever it might be, but if whatever he's doing and it's not necessarily in that high-ranking position, he's still your husband. So don't throw him away. But the husband does need to understand who this wife is that God has made, who he made in the, her mother's womb, who she's supposed to be before she leaves this planet. And don't let her leave this planet with all of this that God has in her all bottled up because you hindered her. So we need to make sure that we're communicating. We need to make sure uh, that you communicate with your spouse so that your prayers are not hindered. Now that there are many female apostles and husbands out here, have you all even thought about it, that the role of an apostle's husband is not really defined? There is no cookie cutter approach for them to follow like the pastor's wife or the pa uh, apostle's wife. You got all these uh, role uh, plays and, and job descriptions for the apostle's wife, but what about the apostle's husband? We don't even talk about that or think about that because it's just now really rising up on the scene in this modern day society that we live in. So therefore you need to think about that because as you're being the apostle, the female apostle, people are looking and trying to measure your husband just like they measured that person who is an apostle's wife. And we can't really do that. It doesn't work that well, putting them in that same role. Uh, here's where dwelling with them according to knowledge comes in place. Communicate what this looks like in your marriage. You need to sit down and do that. That's what we did. My husband and I talked about, okay, you're in the lead position uh, because we both were pastors together for a while. Uh, and now, you know, I'm now as, a, as an apostle. And he's, you know, you're in the lead position, so therefore, let's see what that looks like as far as how we deal with society and, and our children and everybody else that's looking at us like, Dad, why aren't you in the lead position? What happened to you? You know, people are asking questions like that. Can a husband role be equally the same as an apostle's wife's role? And I think not, because you have to still understand what that husband needs and what that husband understands. and. He has to be able to go to God for himself and find out what God is expecting of him being in his role as well. But men are treated differently than women. It's just a knowledge that we already know. You know, first of all, the expectations and the frustrations that the church has given the wife, and I'm talking about the apostle's wife, that wife who is a key leader, they have been classified more to be a submitted sidekick. That's what I called it, a submitted sidekick. You know, you're my sidekick and you just need to stay submitted and that's it. it. So the husband, when he hears, I don't wanna be your sidekick, <laughs> and not sure if I wanna hear that word that I have to submit everything to you. Because when you go home, that changes in the first place. And number two, when you're out in front, you're looking at it as an office and you're not looking at it as, you know, as just being there with two people just being bossed around. You understand it, the husband understands it, and you know that it's okay to submit in that way. But in the way that it was more so for the apostle's wife, they really didn't get the honor or the uh, understanding of who they were even as an apostle's wife. So husband's role can uh, be to have respect and they want to also respect you, and they also want to support their wives and still carry their professions and be able to be the man, okay? I'm not saying they always gonna be the man of the house because that's another subject for another day, but that's not always true. They're not always acting like they need to be to be that lead person in the house. So, you know, a husband is to take care of the wife. That's what we talk about a lot, but 
This does not mean that he rules over her. Please wake up and see this today. It does not mean that you have to be the villain who is always bam, bam, bam on her head. You're not going to rule over her in that way and try to make her make the decisions that you want to make in her apostleship or her leadership role. No, 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 no. I don't know if I know any times that my husband tried to rule over me and tell me, when you go to that meeting today, you tell them blah, blah, blah. I don't know of any times. And most of the time, if we were out or something, he may have given his opinion, but he knew that the last say so, I'm going to have it because I have to answer to God as an apostle for myself, not as the wife at that moment, but as an apostle. So when I, and I can give this an example, when I work as a branch manager in one of the local banks here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, my spouse did not come to my job to help me make my decisions that I had to make when I had to fire people, hire people, try to change things around, keep the bank from being robbed, all those decisions that I had to make. He didn't come to do that, and he didn't try to come to protect me. I was actually robbed in a bank two times while I was a branch manager, or my tellers were. But I can say to you, my husband didn't come and say, oh my God, get her out of there, she's my wife, I cover her, get her out. He had to trust that the people that were there were going to do the right thing and make sure it happened. But the authority that I had as an officer, I was a branch manager and officer in the bank, the Lord took that authority and used it for his glory and made sure that I made the proper decisions and my husband had to trust the decisions I made. I knew what to do. I'd been trained what to do. Therefore, I was okay. Same thing in the, nat in the spiritual realm. I know what to do. I've been trained what to do. So I'm not going to be afraid when I get out and have to do things that God says, go do this, go do that, stop that, change that, rebuke that, clear up that, get this atmosphere right, pull this back in. When God says that, I don't call and try to get everybody all over town's opinion or thought process. I'm going to do it the way God told me to do. I'm an apostle who's been called of God, and my husband knows what that means, and I know what that means. So another example would be the president. If President Trump meets with his cabinet today, his wife does not go to the meeting every time he meets with his cabinet. That's not going to happen. She does not set in on the decision making and saying, well, we're husband and wife, so I'm going to help make this decision. No, no, no. Same thing in your household. My husband has a job outside of our home. I have a particular job working several different places, but he makes his decisions there. I make my decisions here, and he doesn't come on my job, and I don't go on his. That's just where it is. And we may talk about those things that we're talking about, but we don't let the other make all the influence be that's what's going to have to happen. We both know who we are, and we both are there but there are certain boundaries and certain guidelines that should be considered in any time, in any marriage that you have where people are actually trying to find out, you know, I, she's the apostle. So there's boundaries, even though I'm the apostle. There's uh, guidelines, even though I'm an apostle. And what I'm referring to is when I come home, <laughs> that's a different boundary, okay? When he comes where I am, if I'm in a conference or in a summit or in a meeting, there's a different boundary. When I'm sitting in a uh, cabinet meeting with Dr. Paula Price, whatever it might be that she may be uh, hosting, he doesn't come and step in and say, come on, we, we're supposed to have a date going to the movies. If we forgot the movies, we've got the... In other words, he respects that place of wherever I am, and he lets me function in that office with or without him. So when I'm functioning in my office, he respects me in my office. He also calls me Apostle Sally when I'm functioning in my office when I'm out in front of people or I'm in the public view. He doesn't say, come on, babe. He doesn't holler that across the room. He knows what that office really holds. He's studied it as well. So he knows what I'm functioning as an apostle. So when I function as a wife, he respects me as a wife. And see, this is what I'm trying to bring out today. Don't be so holier than thou. Come on now, listen to what I'm trying to say. I take time to make sure my house is his castle. Even when I'm tired and I may have to stay up to one o'clock to do it. I don't make complaints and say, well, I got all these apostle duties. I can't do it. Now, he is a house cleaner. He doesn't mind because he likes to clean house. But I make time to make sure if something is not in order, I'm putting it back in order. I take time to sit down, and he says, let's go watch. Uh, we watched that movie Breakthrough the other day. And I said, okay, let's go watch this movie. This is a great movie. Now, he knows I don't watch every kind of movie, so that's just where it is. So, you know, I make time to go watch a movie with him. 
and sit down and watch in our house. We'll find something on TV that we go, okay, we gotta watch this. This is really gonna be healthy. So I make time to go sit on my patio with him and I listen to him even though I'm exhausted. That's a good wife. So you all, as wives that are the apostle, don't think that you can't do anything with your man. I don't care if your schedule is extremely hectic. It's okay. God will let you have time to go and spend time with your mate. That's what it's all about. I do not push him to be somebody he's not. I do not push him aside and say you're nobody. He knows what I have homework. He knows what I have to do as an apostle to stay in the right respect. But again, this didn't happen overnight either. It took many years for us to get here. He knows my first report to is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he knows that my other report to is Apostle Do uh, Dr. Paula Price. <laughs> so she's my chief apostle. So he doesn't try to fight either one of them and say, what are you doing? You're always taking too much time from my wife. He doesn't go there. And if he thinks it, he goes before his God, our God that we know, and deals with that because bringing it to me and trying to fight me with it, he knows that I'm changing right now in the middle of my living room into my function of an apostle if he's going to try to come against anything our Lord Jesus Christ has already designated for Apostle Sally Cheney. Or if he tells me to do something outside of the will of God, that's not going to happen. So I know that my first report twos have to be answered, and he knows that. So he does not try to override an order or try to order me around when it comes to operating my call. He just doesn't do it. He doesn't say, okay, you know, uh, I just need to order you to do this this week because we got to be in... Um, uh, Hawaii, we like going to Hawaii, and you need to take that break in there. You're tired, and you're my wife. You're my wife. You're my, he doesn't bring that to the table. He trusts God in me enough to know that if there needs to be a vacation, it's going to work out. The grace of God is even in that, too, and God will allow it to happen. That's a good guy. That's a good husband. So, again, we're not perfect. You know, he takes good care of me. My husband does, but being an apostle was a work it was a work in progress still to this day so when i'm at home i respect him and he respects me i respect him as a husband i res and he respects me as a wife again he calls me sally he calls me uh uh cute words names that we call each other that's all you need to know so <laughs> you know he and i both clean our house he and i both manage things in our house we have fun together we laugh in the middle of just looking at each other and go that is too funny I make sure I'm a wife when I'm with him. That's what I'm trying to convey to you. I don't try to be Apostle Sally Cheney working in a very uh, strong way to fight off something or deal with matters of the kingdom that uh, make him feel like, but I just wanted to ask you, were we going to go to the store together? You know, yes, we have human conversations, and he enjoys those conversations, so I make sure I'm a wife with him. That's what I want to convey. I have times when I sit under my husband's arm, and I know that he's protecting me just by my sitting under his arm. It's okay, and I'm saying this maybe to some people because you think, should I even get married? Is it going to be too hard to get married? I can't tell you that it's always hard. I cannot tell you it's always easy, but I can tell you that grace is in, in, in a marriage. When you get into a marriage and you have to do the work that an apostle has to do, there's grace for the job. So if it's not there, do not get married. That's what I'll say to you. <laughs> so um, we were married actually while I was actually ascending to be an apostle about 20 something years ago. So we didn't know that all of what I am now and what I have to do now was going to be in full speed ahead. So when I was about to be commissioned as an apostle, let me tell you this, some of my husband's concerns were our time, our activities, would we have time together, will I ever see her again, will the church accept her, uh, will the church accept me, uh, he, he, all those things were going on in his mind. There were also safety concerns of, oh my goodness, she's going to be gone a lot in the night and I'm not going to be with her on those trips and th different things. So he was concerned about that. So he was asking questions. But I'm going to tell you this because we're about to close. I'm going to say this to you as a husband. When you are expecting to be under uh, 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 in a marriage with a wife that is the lead person, the husband must recognize his wife's call. 
He does not overshadow his wife in any way. He allows her to freely perform her duties as an apostle. A husband must accept the fact that his wife has been given authority over the church and in the kingdom to use that authority for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Husbands have authority in the home. That is <laughs> sometimes. So we'll talk about that another day. And so while the male spouse is the protector of his wife and the protector of his home, he should be the ears and the eyes for the wife. That's what they need to do. And husbands must accept that there are times when he cannot come to his wife's side to rescue her. I've seen this many times in my marriage. There are times when his wife may feel hurt, may feel lied on. He must learn when and how to intervene and don't go over the head of that apostle. He cannot take over things. He cannot. Godly wisdom is important, okay? So you need to know that. I want to know if you all are being blessed by this. So I want you all to give me some comments and I want you to know that you can share this with other people. Maybe some husband or wife or a pastor or whomever that needs it. And uh, let, let it be known that you got to let go and let God have his way in your marriage so that the, that apostle who is a female can go and do all that God has called us to do. So remember... Share, share, share. Remember that you can give into this ministry right now. There should be something being posted of where you can give. Please, it's a good ministry. I hope that you're able to give. And also, we're going to pray with you, but reminding you that tonight, Prophet Tamara is going to be on at 730, Prophet Circle, Apostle Ashley at 9 in the morning on Apostles of the Future, and Prophet Tala, and I believe Dr. Paul and Price will be here tomorrow night at 730 on Wednesday Warriors. So make sure that you're there. Father, I thank you that the lives that are being affected by these broadcasts are bringing you the glory that you deserve. Father, I think that this is good fruit that is going on by teaching and, and, and giving the, the strength that needs to be given to help relationships, to help people come free from their roots. And God, for those that have treasure, to pull the treasures up. This is a treasure, God. I know that it is. To be an apostle and to be married, it's a treasure. And Lord, I've had it on my shelf because I didn't want to talk about it because I thought people would get afraid. But I take it off my shelf today and I say it's out of my attic. I'm going to broadcast lo as loud as you tell me to do to get the people free and knowing you can be a female apostle and you can have a husband who is not in that leadership capacity, but he can support you. He can dwell with you according to knowledge so that his prayers will not be hindered. And God, I pray for that on every person, even those that may be not married, but they got to share this with someone else, God, to get people set free. I bless you. I praise you. I bless this audience. Let it be for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Amen.